Anyway, thanks for hanging out with us today, Brian. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So I got to start at the beginning of Short Fuse Brewing, which would obviously be your first ever alcoholic beverage. Oh, gosh. First yeah. ever at Short Fuse or ever in my life? No, no. Ever in your uh, life. You got to go back to the beginning, beginning. Uh, I vaguely remember a like a boring answer of like my grandma giving me something like some old style or something that was still around in like the eighties. Uh, okay. So you read my mind. Yeah. Grandma. Um, probably a more interesting one was like the first time we ever got caught drinking alcohol. Uh, we were at my friend's house in the winter driving snowmobiles and he had a bar in his basement. And I think, I think there was a bottle of like Sam Adams, like winter seasonal or something like that. And somebody cracked it open and like we shared a few sips and we just like hear his mom like, well, well, well. We're just like deer in headlights, like, oh no, we're in so much trouble. Not really. (laughs) And only (laughs) for sips of beer wasn't even worth it. (laughs) Not really. I mean, she she started stopped it before anything got carried away. I'm like, you can't do too much with like a bottle of beer. No, and also it's almost not fair. It's not fair to have a bar in the house. No. And then I'm exactly. assuming you guys were teenagers, be like, sorry, yeah. teenage boys, <laughs> you're <laughs> you screwed on this. <laughs> so then how do you go from uh, getting caught, taking sips of Sam Adams, <laughs> your friend's parents bar to deciding that you want to go into the brewery business and um, going with Short Fuse? Yeah, I, I was just really disinterested with my degree coming out of college. You know, I, I thought I chose the right path and I came across an article, I don't know if it was Time oh. Magazine or some other Chicago publication about Chicago brewers, brewmasters and stuff like that. And one of them mentioned a brewery school in Chicago, the Siebel Institute. And it was just kind of like this moment, like I could probably do that. Like, that's pretty cool. And it was just a total shot in the dark. I had never brewed beer before in my past. I was not a home brewer. And I was just like, I signed up and I started coursework in 2013 and thankfully it worked out. Do you think that that sort of um, inexperience and it being almost like a random kind of um, path for you was helpful or do you think because it like helped you think outside of the box or do you think it was more detrimental that you and like you had a learning curve? Uh, it's a little bit of both. I think like, like in the beginning, because I didn't have that prior like homebrewing experience or those biases, like I was just kind of like open, you know, I was just, you know, learning all this new stuff. But I think as I got into my first job, I realized like, whoa, I am very inexperienced. <laughs> um, so at that time I was the head brewer of 1090 Brewing and I was just like, I got to find a job where I can take a step back and maybe like learn from people that are smarter than me. So I think it's a little bit of both. Totally. So what do you think that you bring your, I would say brewing philosophy is what do you want to bring into your product and have people experience when they come into short fuse? Consistency, I think. I mean, that's, so my last job was working at Goose Island for five years and, you know, that's a large brewery company. So there's always like, everything is consistent. If it goes out the door, it's like, that's like whatever green line tastes the same today as it will like three months from now. So just trying to bring that in and improving products. Um, and I think we've been doing a really good job with that. Yeah, weirdly, not the uh, first person to mention Goose Island on one of these <laughs> interviews. I think no, someone no. else also worked with Goose Island. So you chug it along. And do, do you also do a lot of chugging along? Do you get to have one of those jobs where you're like, yes, I have to drink this beer for research? Yes, there's lots of research. <laughs> and we had... Uh, Somebody was just asking us, so we just released a birthday cake milkshake beer. And oh. I kept like, I kept dosing it with flavoring and tasting it. I was just like, I've tasted this so many times. I don't know if it's good or not. <laughs> and I had to like wait a day because lots of research and goes into these. Uh, and I had to like wait a day before I going back and doing some more research and like trying it again. Before I was like, okay, good. Like I got, <laughs> I got it right. Yeah. So I, as a lay person here. I don't know all that much about what brewing beer is like. How the hell does one make a birthday cake beer? Like, what does that process even look like? How are you like, yes, these are the flavors of birthday cake. And that's how I'm going to get them into this beer and communicate this idea. Uh, uh, Flavorings, extracts, 
mostly. Um, So vanilla extract, lots of vanilla extract, and then literally birthday cake extract flavoring. Interesting. It's it's very simple. Uh, They they do all the work for us. You just like, you put in a little bit of time until you get the right amount and then you're done. Fair enough. So how did you get into um, specifically being just a brewer? Did you have like the bartending experience in there as well? And then you were like, you know, of the alcohols, the beer is the one that <laughs> I, like makes me happy that I want to put the work into that inspires my like creativity piece in there. Oh, yeah. I mean, probably goes back to, uh, you know, drinking when we were younger, like always like trying to like drink something different. You know, while most people are having like Miller Lite or Bud Light, I was drinking like Coors Original or the ever classy Ice House. It's like, you know, it's nothing like over the top amazing, but it's like, it was different. And then we found a really good bar uh, and a uh, bottle shop on college and just frequently the, frequenting those places, you know, little by little, it's like, you kind of, you're kind of paving this track of like, okay, like beer seems to be like a steady theme and like things that I like. Um, and I've done some bartending, um, but I would, wouldn't really say that terribly influenced getting into beer. But I think it was just, you know, learning that there was that beer school here and be like, yes, that makes sense. I don't know why, but it makes sense right now. <laughs> Your heart was calling out to the beer. It's just, yeah. You didn't it's even awful. have to have a rhyme or reason, just an instant <laughs> no. connection. <laughs> meant to be. To the beer. So what do... You guys have on, I guess on tap is a way to put it, but for 2021, for short views coming out of the pandemic, obviously you weren't able to do a lot of stuff last year. So are there things yeah. that you were trying to make up for this year? Not really. I think if anything, we're playing it safer this year than we did mm. last year. Uh, you know, just not knowing what last year was all about and actually having good sales, you know, people being home more, we've seen all the memes about quarantine and drinking. And that helped us. I mean, transitioning beers uh, from draft to cans, people really responded. Uh, But this year, it kind of seems like the opposite is maybe people are drinking too much last year. So maybe they're drinking less this year. So we're trying to play it safe, not be too experimental. uh, But these are going pretty good so far this year. So it's definitely encouraging. Absolutely. So what was it like transferring to cans last year? And do you think that that's something that you guys are going to continue now that you have gotten, I I assume, a canning system sort of in place. Yeah, uh, tough because there was a can shortage. I know, you know, people would always, that I knew in the industry, like, are you short on cans? Like, what's going on? Who's your can supplier? It's like, well, we like kind of just skating by right now on cans. And we found some guy that just like stashed a bunch away like a chipmunk and just like handed them out, not handed them out, but like, he definitely had a gold mine with all those cans and stuff. Um. But yeah, I mean, this year it seems like a draft is definitely picking up. Bars are back, restaurants are back. Um, so we see a little bit of transition away uh, from cans into draft, which kind of makes sense in a normal world. Sure. Do you think that there's um, a difference uh, in the can experience versus the draft experience when you're actually at the bar or slash brewery, rather? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think if you're going to a bar, I mean, you like go and have like a draft beer mm-hmm. and really when it comes down to it, if, if people are putting quality product in like cans and draft, it's really not the same beer because it's all mm. coming out of the same tank, but something about that experience, like if you're at the bar, like a draft beer is really good. If you're outside at a barbecue or on a boat, like you want like a can, maybe a bottle, sure. like depending on what's available. So yeah, I think experiences are different with the packages. Fantastic. And is there anything that you guys want to get out into the ether? Let the people know about short fuse. Uh, we are open. <laughs> <laughs> Fair Come enough. Visit Go us. visit short Come fuse. Drink beer. Um, our, let's see where we can be back open on Wednesdays for lunch. I think this week or pretty soon. So double check our hours. If you want to come by, uh, and we're the closest brewery to the airport. So if you need pre-plane or post-plane drinks, we're here for you. Pre-planned drinks. Always have more than you think you need. 